Warning to my players, this contains spoilers for Grey's backstory. Welcome to episode 2 of the Dragonhearted series. If you were wondering, this is a D&D story that has been adapted to be more like an audio drama or a narrative. You do not need to watch the video, there will not be many pictures or anything from here on out. Last time the party met, they fought together against a small band of overly organised bandits. After the fight, Lord Smythe picked up the Nexus, a small round blue orb, and brushed himself off. The town has nothing in store for these big picture adventurers, other than for the local, Grey, Grey Shadeleaf. Grey grew up here. He was born from an adventuring couple, his father, Beatrick, an excellent alchemist. Beatrick married Beda, the reckless fighter who shared blood to the essences, one of the gods of this world. Beatrick and Beda travelled around the entire UTR, United Trading Republic, scouring the world for new components and potion ingredients. The last place they travelled was the town Grey grew up in. The town they were in was attacked. A swarm of scrap invaded. The two defended the town from the brunt of the attacks, along with Aelfond and Lee Hauser. Winfred stayed behind, protecting the young Dina and Centric. It has now been 14 years since the Shadeleaf parents died in that fight. Grey was adopted by Rue Aiton, the wine brewer, the arborist. She was tall. She is the most homely of people. She often wore many layered clothes and always an apron, with her work gloves in her front pocket. In those 14 years, the people of that town have changed too. The seer, Mrs. I, became a resident. And even in her ten years of being in the hamlet, she still has no home. Workers joined, including a tailor, a designer, and the pig farmer, Harper Milton. Grey grew up too, alongside the Steinmach and the Hauser families, always between their constant fights. Always between Knox and Edward, chasing after Liza and Cam, the youngest of the town and being propped up again and again by Dina. She was always busy, cooking, cleaning, or looking after the infant Lisa. Yet she had time, she always had time, to listen. As Grey took care of the children, his stature and relationship with Dina grew. He was hunting on the day of the bandit attack. He was on a mission to find the venison of the month. He was going to uh, donate some of the choice cuts to the Steinmacht. That day, there was a spell cast. This spell caused mass agitation. Lee stormed out of the house, the traditional mud and wood shingle slant. He met Knox in the road. The fight escalated until Lord Smythe stepped in to defuse it. Grey fought off a large mosaic turtle mother. Dina had found the child and returned it to the turtle's mother. The bout of frantic hysteria, she grabbed Liza and made her way to the street. She met up with Centric and held his hand, releasing her anxiety through the comfort of his presence. Grey was convinced he hadn't seen anything. Centric was just a guard, he was there to defuse the situation. Right? Shopping had gone well for everyone. Yet Lord Smythe had caught the moment. He had understood. He tapped his pocket and smiled, holding the pressed flowers he had recently bought. Now for some DM babbling. So, uh, this session, it's been a couple weeks since I actually played in it. I am the DM, and I was going to run a more quiet uh, shopping session. 
These are often good after the start of an adventure where you can see where everyone's motivated, or in the middle of a high stakes thing so that you can relieve tension and that the characters can prepare. These often give many useful resources and can introduce many new NPCs. It's a great time for a DM to work. Another thing I implemented in these sessions, which is unique to my setting, is fear damage. When a creature is scared or feared or shocked in, in any way that would make them lose their guard, they take fear damage. For example, it could be something like a door slamming behind them when they thought they were alone, they might take a d6 fear damage. Or it could even be something like a person they know well, they find their dead body, they would take fear damage or shock damage. At the end of the encounter, or after this fear would have worn off, maybe after a minute or two minutes, they regain health equal to the amount of fear damage they took. Fear damage can never take you below 10 hit points. So, that's the concept of fear damage, which I'm implementing. I've tried it for many more sessions now, and it seems to be working very well. It often ups the stakes, and I've seen some players use it in some interesting tactics. Um, one example of this is, hypothetically, they could all target the captain of an orc camp, and if they kill the captain, all of the people beneath him would take fear damage and become disorganized because they have no leader anymore. In this setting I'm using another set of homebrew rules. This is my system for long rests. I think this is very useful because it means people, especially casters, will lay out their plans more long term. Because long rests, where they get their spell slots back, take, on average, up to seven days. This can be longer if they're in harsh situations, like in the forest just camping on the ground, but can be shortened the higher quality of place you're in. If you're in a city, I would say it takes two days, and if there is a hospital, you can reduce that by one more day. But if you're sleeping on hard beds and eating cold food and not treating yourself well, the time becomes longer and longer and longer, until theoretically you could be at half hit points because of battle you had months ago. And the town. This is a small starting town. I like setting them here in, in little places to see how much they've grown by the end of it. This is all that they knew of. This isn't where all the people came from. Everyone has their own backstory, and uh, Lord Smythe especially, he's got a very grandiose backstory uh, as a politician. But other than that, it's always nice to have a well-developed frame of reference to see where everyone has come from and where everyone has started from. And I am so glad you've listened to this. I'm sorry it is not what I told you it would be in the ne last video I made. But the next video will definitely be about world building. I'm hoping to start a series where I explain the world that I've made. And it should be fun. Most of it will be ad lib. I will not write scripts for them. So it will be a bit more free flowing. There will be some segments which I have written out, but that is the case for most of my notes. Anyway, see you in the next one. Sneak Peek will be covering the Oak One.